Welcome to Class Time. I am Camille Johnson Burrell. <clears throat> and I am Tamika Lodge Fenton. And we'll be kicking things off with our first lesson in the series on transformation geometry, which is actually the most useful math concept for creating video gaming graphics. So if you are interested in that, you definitely need to pay attention to this, okay? Let's begin. So today's topic, Kame, is translation. translation. All right. Well, what are we going to do first? We're going to participate in an activity and we're, we want our viewers to participate as well. Most definitely. So all of you, get up off your couches, stop what you're doing just for a few seconds and do this activity with us. All right. We're going to have fun. We guarantee that it's going to be fun. So come on, get up, man. Quick, quick, quick. Up, ready to go. So let's, let's go. Begin. So three, two, one. Let's enjoy yourself. Because you know. we, we had did. fun and we're still having fun. Oh, that's right. right. We had fun. Well, we've got to get in this lesson. So come here. Tell me some things that you saw in that little exercise. Hmm. What math you saw coming out there? Math, math. Well, I took one hop forward, mm -hmm. took another hop backward, a slide to the left. Slide to the right. A cha-cha as well, too, you know. Yeah. I did my cha-cha. So you were moving. I was moving. From and different really, locations. Yes, my location changed. That's true, that's because true. Because I started one position, and when I realized... I'm you moving, were somewhere else. I did. There was some amount of pattern seen there as well, don't it? Yes, yes, Because if, if you and I were doing the thing just as we should, we wouldn't collide. Because all the movements you are making, I would be making in the same direction. Those are some of my things, you know. You know what else I noticed? Tell me. My size did not change. Well, neither did I. I wish I, I had lost some weight, but hey. Didn't change at all. No, we're still the same size. We're not so, taller. We're not shorter. The integrity of our bodies remained, although we were moving. Oh, and guess what, too? We didn't flip. No, we didn't. We didn't so, rotate. None at all. No, 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 no. So we, we can say safely then that... There was some movement, well, change in our moved, location. But we remain the same. Yes, we remain. Let's see what this lesson has in store for our students. Some sliding. <laughs> some sliding. Cha -cha -cha. Some change in location. Let's see what we can discuss today. All right. So, what comes to mind when you think of transformation? Transformation. Hmm. I am transformed. You know the cartoon Transformers? Yeah, man. Transformers. They oh, do man. change. Yes, there's some change taking that is place. taking place. All right, all right. No. So there are different types of transformation. There's translation, rotation, dilation, and reflection. Let us see what we're going to... Well, we know what we're talking about today, right? We know what we're talking about. Hold on. Don't spoil it yet, man. Right. Don't spoil it yet. I want you to tell me, good, good, what transformation is. Right. So even though we would have spoken about, here the cartoon and there was some change and all that, I need Let's to... Let us formally know. define what yeah, transformation what? Yes, is. Yes, we need to do that. All right, we can do that. So a transformation is a change in the position or size of an object. Hmm. Hmm. I think in transformation, some things happen too. Some things change. So let's see what happens. All right. So, so we have the shape before <coughs> it is transformed in any position or size is known as the pre-image or object. And guess what? Mm. The pre-image becomes the image once the move, and this move is the transformation. This is some occurs. important information. Very important. So let us just look at it again. What you said: the image. The, there's a pre-image pre or image object, object, yes, and then there is an image, image after, after the transformation has takes taken place. place. All right. So, in today's lesson, a part of transformation, we'll be definitely looking closer at. The concept of translation. 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 All right. So let's get into that. Translation. Let's take a look at a few examples and discuss translation. Let's see mm. what happens. Oh, Mr. Smiley Face. Yes, it is. What does translation look like? Well, I moved. So let's see if Mr. Smiley Face will move. Oh, wow. He moved. So he moved from X, location to? X, to location Y. Mm. And when we look at it, we realize that the size here of Mr. Smiley Face did not are, change. Didn't change. Did not change. And before this movement took place, we were, we refer to it as the object or exactly. image. Exactly. And afterwards, we call it our image. Okay. Now, so a translation 
is a change in location. Which we And we can look seen. at Mr. Smiley Face. He's still smiling. Still smiling. In face, still as fat as it was over there. Amen. Right. So he has not changed. All right. So let us see. Here we have a van. Hmm. Hmm. What's so going to happen van, here? Hold on, man. The van is translated from position A. And I want you to look at where position it's A in position is. position A. To position B. And this is what I want you to do for us today. Hmm. We spoke about translation being a change in location. So you're going right. to describe this translation to me. So take a look at the van now. Let's see what's up. That Vroom. is so cool. Room. Right. So the van has... The, the, the van drove to the right. All right. The so van, we... yeah, it drove right over to position B. Great. So, so if I were to describe it, the, the van, van drove. drove directly to the right. Good job. Nothing else. But All hold right. on, man. I want us to look at the next one because I want to ensure you get it, you know. Mm. So you're going to describe this translation for All me right. as well. So, so if you realize see. you have a shoe, well, it's not my shoe, but we have a shoe here. A nice sneaker there. Nice right. sneaker. And this show, there's going to be a change in location. Let's see I what... need you to tell us what happened. Let's go. I've got this. Whoa. So, initially, it, it, it sl slide or glide over, it slid over to the right. And then it went down. All it right. went down. Good. So, you realize now that you're giving me two. Movements. Movements. You're yes. giving me a movement that it slides so to the right. Hard. Yeah, that's to the right. Yes, and then you're telling me that it went down. down. Hmm. Well, I wonder what it would look like, because we always talk about grid paper, graph paper. Hmm. I wonder what it would look like if we can maybe put some... If you can fine-tune this yeah, movement. Man. Yes. All right, let's watch this show so, move again. Whoa. So, if you're talking about fine-tuning, the shoe was in the... The, that box right under the position, position A, A right. it moved one, two boxes or two units over and then one down. But hold on, two units to what direction? Oh, no. sorry, two units to the right, right and then one downward. Okay, great. All right. So, that's important to note. Very important. So, if you're looking at the movements, all of those things that we've looked at so far, we could describe that change in location. Yes, we can. All right. We can. But there are some things to note All when right. you're looking at translation. So the first thing that we need to note is a translation is a transformation that slides a figure across a plane or through space. But guess what? There's something else we need to know. Mm. But I see that you really want to... Yeah, because I was thinking the shoe slid across, the car pretty much it drove, but it yes. slid across that area. What else we looked at? Um, and the smiley face, it slid, it slid and to the we, right. We and had we slide had slid to, to the right. Slide and we hopped. We did That's one hop true. forward, one hop backward. So guess what? We were translating, we were translating as well. That's so cool. It's very cool. All right. So all points of a figure move the same distance and in the same direction. It does not affect the order of the points. And pretty Saw much that. if you look at our bodies, when we move to the left, to the right, we were intact. We, we all of us. Everything are. remained. So all, all points, points were did the move. okay. All points were okay. All <laughs> yeah. right. Here we go now. So the, the translation, and we're going to be looking at this further on. We would have started it, but we want to really look what it is. The translation can be represented by a column vector. Okay. So I'll ask you about that. And then the orientation of the shape does not change, which we, we would have, we have concluded said, already. Right. Right. Just using our example or when we did that little initial activity. Yes. So Good. these are things we need to note going forward. When we look at translation, these are important points to remember. Yes. All right. Let's take it a little bit further. So we would have looked at some objects, smiley face, a van, right. a shoe. Let's look at some shapes now on our graph paper. Let's so I want you to tell me what does the translation vector, I know that I'm putting you on the spot, mm. now tells us. Let's see if you can figure it out. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to stress myself. So the translation vector, which is written in that form, a value to the top and a value to the bottom. So the first value tells me the horizontal movement of the translation. And this horizontal movement is parallel. Since as we have our Cartesian plane now right. on screen, what would this horizontal movement be parallel to? 
or x-axis. Great. So the movement is left to right. Great. Left and to it right. Must be parallel to the x-axis. Great. And then we have the other value within the column vector, which tells us the vertical movement All right. of the object. And this is parallel to which the axis? The y-axis. Great. So and this movement is either upwards up or downwards. downwards. Great. So we established that. So yep. let's look at our triangle here. So our triangle here that we're starting with, what we do, did we say when we're starting off the original here? It's what do we call called it? the object or, or pre-image. Great. So here we have our object or our pre-image. Let's take a look at what happens. Okay. So here we have our translation vector being 3, 1. Mm -hmm. And we would already shared and already established that our three units here would have been parallel to our x-axis and our one unit here would be parallel to our y-axis. Great job. So let's take a look at what happens to our triangle. All right, so the three is, the three tells us that it's moving three to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to realize that, why well, didn't move to the left, but we're gonna pick it up. We have a positive three here and it moves three units to the right. Each point has moved three units to the right. And then each point will then move one unit upward. Great job. All right. Nice. Let's take so, a look at another one. And we have see. our object and our image. image. So let's let's see. Here if we are. We're getting it. So we're still on the translation vector, and we now have a movement of four parallel to the x, x axis, axis and a movement of zero parallel, parallel to, to the, the y axis. Okay. Now, before we do any movement, uh -huh. what can you tell me is happening here with our translation vector? So just look at it and tell me what do you observe. One of the values is zero. And in this instance, the zero is in the lower, is a, is a lower value, which tells us that there's no movement parallel, parallel to, to the, the x-axis. To the y-axis. So the zero tells to us the there's, y -axis. there's no movement parallel to the y-axis. Y -axis. There's no vertical movement, right? Yes, there's no great. upward or downward movement. Great. So let's oh, just yes. look at what it looks like. So... The four indicates that there's four units to, to the, the right, right and or zero again represents no, no movement, movement parallel to the right or, or down. downwards parallel to the y-axis. All right, right. Let's, let's take another look. So here we have another activity. So here we have... And that's different. We have a negative value here. Great. So mm. we have negative three and we have a positive two. But let's really think about it. If we've been paying it. attention, all the translation vectors that we've looked at so far were positive value for the horizontal movement. Great. And we continuously move to the right. right. Good job. So this negative means that we're clearly moving in the opposite direction. Good. I see that you're paying attention. Yeah. Good. So that means we're moving to the right to the left oh, sorry to mm -hmm. the left all and right the vertical movement is still positive so we're moving upward, upward. so we're let moving us see right so three units to the left and parallel to the x-axis right and then two units on upward. parallel to the y-axis great good all job right so here we are both values are negative hmm. all right so the positive was right for the um top value and upward when it's positive for the lower value. So it's now left and down. Great. All right. So let's see what this looks like. So we have gone three units to the left. Right. And four units downward. Good. So what we can take from this is, before we go on, our translation vector tells us how many units to move, so how many moves, how many slides we make. And it also gives us direction, whether it is left or right or Upward or downwards? But hold on, man, uh -huh. hold on. So we're talking about the movement. So remember with our vector now that we're talking about, our translation vector, mm -hmm. we would have had a horizontal movement parallel to the x-axis right. and a vertical movement parallel to the y-axis. Correct. Which means then that, again, our translation vector does tell us our horizontal movement and whether left or right parallel yes. to the x-axis and or a vertical movement tells us whether upwards or, or downwards parallel to the y-axis. But guess what as well that I, I don't know if you realize, hmm. instead of moving, you know, doing the slides, counting right. the units, whether to the right, left, up okay. or downwards, okay. 
I want to see if we can look at something here. So we started with our object, right? Most definitely. So we started with our object. Or our pre-image, but we're using object here. So object, mm -hmm. pre-image. Did we do anything to our object pre-image? Well, we applied. To our image? Yes, we applied the information given in our translation vector. So talk to me now. Oh. Okay, so I guess if we... So we see. have object working with... This is what I want you to do for me before I go there. Right. We have object working with, we have image working with, and we also have a translation vector working right. with. Hmm. So I want you to put all this together for me. In a math and, sentence? Yes, I want you hmm. to put it in a math sentence for me. All right. So I'm going to put it right here so that we remember... All right, I can, so the object, we apply the translation vector to the object. All right, well, let's, let's say we add the translation vector to the object to give us the image. All right, so in order then to, if we wanted to work it out, to get our image, so our image here would be equal to our object plus mm -hmm. our translation Vector. All right. Let's and I let's want let's prove us that. To remember this goal. I want you to prove forward. that. We're going to. We're definitely going to. You realize I'm putting it one place to All itself right. because we're going to. I know to we prove are applying trans, the translation vector, you know. But why you decide that is add we add it. Well, we're going to see. You know, we're going to see. Right. Don't worry. We're going to look at it. Let's look at this. So one right here. Describe the translation of a to b with a vector. Hmm. All right, A. Let's take to a point. B. So let's take a point. So we have, say, we have A. So point A, a. which is one, two. Oops. So point A, which is right. one, two. Point A. So you're calling this A. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's one, two. And what about and point B? B. We're taking this to be B. Yes. Which would be three, four. Three, four. Mm -hmm. All right. And C would be. And C. <laughs> Would be three, two. Three, Jeez. two. Let's All keep right. my hand off that screen. So here we have our three points on our triangle there. That's right? our, that's our pre-image, our and object. our pre-image, great. Right. And we're looking at, no, we need to figure out our image. That's what we're doing, Most right? definitely. So let's see if it works. If I wanted to know what our image would look like then. We already have the image So there. we can, we can but, just write the points down to see what's the relation. On, let, let us ensure that this is what we got. Mm -hmm. So let's take what you think then we would need. So we have what we have there. We have our image. So this would have been our object. Right. And we have our image. Tell me the points of our image now. So we have A prime. Great. So you're coming in with a new yes, term now. So you're going to explain it for us. Right. So, so A prime. So A prime is 5, 4. Yes. B prime would be 7, 4. That, 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 that looks right. 5, 4, 7, 4. Where, where, where we call B again? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hold on. Right. This was a, it was this B? Yes. Okay. So that's not. So change that 7, 4. Two. B would be 7, seven 6. Good job. Yeah. And then... Okay, and, and C then would C be would be seven four. Seven. Yeah, that four. looks that looks more like it now. All right. So when you look at our object here, prime, and you look at you your... left off the prime. Okay, of the image. Okay, good. So you're paying attention. Yes. Nice. So why are you calling it prime? Because it is not the original. It is an image that has been that came from the original. It's prime. It's you, so tra some transformation. Some transformation has taken place. Good. So we can't call it the object again no. or the pre-image. It is now the image. Because it is due to some change. Great. That we end up with this particular. So in this image, image then, right, we would have not represented it saying A, just no. A, but no, it would be A prime, B prime, C prime. So it explains to us that some change has happened. Once we say a prime, it means that some transformation has taken place. Right. So let's take two points. So we're okay. going to take point A, A from our object. Mm -hmm. We're going to take A prime from our image. Mm -hmm. No, we would have already established that image equals the object plus the translation we vector. We're not really established it. We All set right, up so there. I look. don't know if that is true. You need to prove it. 
All right, so let's take a look. So we would have had our image here, right? Mm -hmm. So we now need to do something with our image and our object to arrive at the translation right. vector. So we need to so see some see relation. Can, let's see if we can subtract. So we have there that we're going to add because some movement took place on our object to okay. arrive at the image. So because some movement, let me show you where I'm coming from. Okay. So we would have had image equals object. And I'm going to write TV for translation vector. All right. So can I just write, because you know you need to make this very clear to me. Yes. So can I just write the point for A prime there, which is 5, 4. Hold on, man. Before we do that, I want us to have something through. So while we're doing other examples or other activities, I need us to know what we're working with. Okay. So let's look at this. So we have image equals object plus our translation vector. Remember, right. TV is translation vector. Right. Now, if we want to find our translation vector, which is what we need to find here, mm -hmm. we know when we are doing algebra, we transpose, and we can even use transposition here. So it would therefore be our image subtract our object, which gives us object subtract object plus our translation vector. Okay, right? fair enough. So our image subtract our object. Subtract our object. Will equal our translation vector. Great job. Translation vector for those who are just joining in. So we, from our general idea there, we have arrived here. Mm -hmm. So we have A prime, which is what now? Now you're talking five, four. four. So we're writing it in a column form. Most right? definitely. So now I'm putting it instead of the row, now I'm writing it in a column form. And now we have our object, so minus our object, which is one, one two. two equals tell me what you think we would get well five subtract one gives me four so four let's, subtract let me write it two. out so that persons are able to see and wait let's let's avoid those double equal signs yes. and use an arrowhead so for one use an arrowhead let for me that. write it below. below it yeah that's fine so it's four two, two which would give us our translation vector but all right you gotta have to you you gonna have to prove that though you know you you, you start with a statement that i Never really fully agree with. So image, so can I just try it with a different point then? Yes, you can. So B, the All image. Right. So let's try image, B. No, yes. Yeah, so B prime would be the image. All right. So that would be seven, six. Seven, six. All so right. that's B prime. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a superscript, not a subscript. Oh Lord Hosh. Yeah, that's minus fine. B. Yes. Right. So now we have um no man, it's equal to. We're not doing that. You, you equal it. Equal it. I to? want to start off with the original statement we have, which is image equal object plus translation okay. vector. So we have the image. All right. Let's put in the object. So the it would be three, four. So the object would be B. B. Uh-huh. Three, four. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And you are claiming that translation vector is four, two. Yes. So TV is four, two. Now, let me see if I, if, if that get adds it. up. All right. So, three plus four is seven. So, tell me what you get on your right-hand side oh. of our equation it, it, it's here. It's right, then. it's right, it's so right. So, let's look. So, here we have three, three plus four. Three plus four, and we also have four. Four plus two. All right. So and ten. it should equal seven, six. All right. And it does. So, four plus three is seven, and four plus two is six are you convinced right. i'm no? good i'm good so your statement stands image equals object plus translation vector all right all, all right. right good we and i hope they at home are getting it so far and definitely since we have that or oh, that that um statement we can transpose if we have the image and the object and we're looking for the translation vector Great. or if we want to figure out what the object right so if we wanted to are, figure out what the object coordinates are what would we have done then it would have been it what it would have been image uh -huh. subtract translation vector good job okay All right. so let's see your movement here so as we just did by calculation the translation vector is four two and if you look at this point which we named it point c for this one it would have been four 
This so, thing is so sensitive, guys. So it would have been four movements to, to the, the right great. and two movements upward. Both values are positive, so it's four. Two is the translation vector for this movement. Voila. So yes. you would have done it by just shifting it on your Cartesian plane. But right. in the event, we can't shift it on our if Cartesian If you don't plane. have a plane, if Great. you don't have the units highlighted, you will just have the coordinates and you want to figure out what the translation vector is. We, we can, can work definitely it work it out. Great. All right. Let's take a look at another one. All right. So we have here. Oh. So I why do you think this it. is happening then? So let's look at this. Well, Based right on what away. I'm seeing here. There's no vertical There's no vertical change, right. So we, we know that that bottom value is zero. Zero. All Correct. right. So, how, so we pick a point. So we're picking this top of the top, the apex at the top of the triangle. Mm -hmm. And I'm counting it off. One, two, three, four. So I'm seeing four movement there. Even if I picked this point over here, one, two, three, four. And if I pick the here, so I'm here, one, two, three, four. So we must remember that all points are moving the same distance in the same direction. Great. All right. So let's look at that. So it's four units upwards and, sorry, guys. Um, and no movement. And no movement. Vertical to our y-axis, right? You sure? All right. So now it's switched. So you have to be careful. You have to look. Mm -hmm. So there's no horizontal movement. Great. So the horizontal movement is zero right. and the vertical movement is four upward. All, All right. right. Great, great, nice. great. Good. So we have to pay attention. But in looking at that too, we are here. here. In looking at this too, what do we realize about the size, the orientation? Oh, it doesn't change. The orientation remains the same. The size does not change. It doesn't get smaller. It doesn't get larger. It, it keeps the integrity of the figure, the object, the original Object keeps its integrity. All Nothing right. changes. Good job. All so right. we can breeze through. So let's look at this one too. All right. So we have described the translation of A to B with a vector. All right. So we have horizontal movement, vertical movement. Right. So we have B. We well said from A to B. All right. So we, you always have to pick a point. Mm -hmm. Now, you like that calculation thing, but if I have the Cartesian plane, I'm just going to count it off. Mm -hmm. So I look at this point, and what's the horizontal move I'm seeing? One, two. So it moved two, and then it went one, two, three upward. All right. Let's All see right? if you're right. Let's see if you're right. You're sure two to the right? What oh, you my said? gosh. It's oh, two to the left. Okay, good. It's two to the left. So I did say two. I just didn't indicate that it's left. So you have to indicate. So it has to be a negative number that tells me that it's moving to the left. And remember, too, that your negative or positive tells you the direction. Right. So it tells you the direction. Right. Good, good So job. the sign of the values within the translation vector tells us what the direction of the move that we're making. Here we are again. So from A to B. They're, they should be getting it at yeah, home. You know? they and they should see it. So from this point, two to the right. So right. it's a positive value. Three downwards, it's a negative value. Good job. And when you're, when you're trying to find the vector, it must be the same point on the object and on the image that you're paying attention. Great to. job. Here we are again. So... For this, both values are negative. So we're moving to the left and, and downwards. Nice. All right. And you guys see the movement. One left and four, four downwards. downwards. Great. All right. Hmm. Here we are. We're a little bit, the shape has changed. We now have both things on the, on the Cartesian, the plane, Cartesian plane. Explain the translation that is taking place. All right. So we, we know we have... Find the object. Or, so this is our object because we have A, B, C, D. And, and we realize that our image is A prime, B prime, C right. prime, D prime. Great. So looking at this, we can say one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to help six me out? Six to the left. Great. Okay. So six to so the left. So that's a negative value. Yes. And it's going upwards. Upwards three times. One, two, three upwards. upwards. So let's All right. see. Good. So there we go. Nice. So the movement, the slide moves the object six units to the left and three units upwards. We also go left or right first, then down or up. So we always go left or right on our, so, well, parallel to our x-axis. Right. And then we go either up or down parallel to our y-axis. All right. Great. All right. 
So Let's here we are. This. So we, we're given the pre-image and the, so we're given the pre-image, which we know is our right. object. And we have our translated image, which we know. So our red is, is our, our pre-image right. and our blue is our image. image. Same thing we're doing. So let's look at the movement. We're explaining it. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And one, so five to the left and three upwards. How would All we right. represent this now as a vector? So it would be negative five as right, a column vector. Right, because it's left. Right, and three, three and there as, it goes. Exactly. Good. All right, so there we are. So we're just, we have just looked at some, some important things, right? We talk about the integrity of the shape as it is translated. It doesn't change, Yes. right? We talk about the image is labeled with prime. Great. Whether, whatever letters, whatever is used, it must be prime. Right. Because it tells us that that's the image and the object is just use capital letters right. there. Right. All right. So we, we know this. So it's similar to what we would have been doing earlier. So what do you think this one would be? All right, so let's just quickly do this. So we're at A, and I said, choose the point. We're and choosing stick to A. It. So we have one, two, three, four. You're sure it's four? If you're using A, so it would a. be three units. Okay, A is three. One, two, three. To the right, two, two units up. upwards. Great. All right, so we're right. talking about this vector would be three. Three. Two. two. All right. Good All job. Right. Let's look at the next one, which is pretty simple as well. So we, let's take another right point. Right away from observation, one of those axes, there's no movement. There's, there's either no vertical. Great. What is it? It's, it's a vertical move. So there's no horizontal, horizontal move. All so right. the value on top is definitely going to be? Zero. Yeah. And there's four. We moved four units right. downwards. So we can definitely see that. All right. All right. Let's look at this one now. So here we are given the image A prime, B prime, C prime, and a translation vector of 0, 6, right? What would be the coordinates of the pre-image? And we can look at this, pretty simple. Okay. So here we would see that there is no movement on our, well, parallel right. to our x-axis. So looking at it now, no movement There's parallel no horizontal to our movement. Great. So but we have a movement of 6 units. And it's positive. Right. It should be. It should be positive. It should be positive. So we are. We want them to try this one at home. Yes. We really need them to try this one at home. But we know, and looking positive. at this right here. So remember, this is the, this is the pre, this is the image. This is the image. So that means wherever the image, wherever the object is. This would have been upward from it. Yes, right. Right, right. So, so guess what? No, instead of us showing that, let's write the coordinates quickly. So we can say no, A but prime. It's fine. Let's just write one. Man. A, A prime, prime okay. Is A prime is one, one, four. One, four? Yes. All right. So one, four. Yes. All right. And so the we've vector our translation would have been vector. So this zero, would have been. zero, six. So TV, zero, six. And we know to find <clears throat> our object, it would have been, we would have to subtract, right? Our vector, our translation vector from the image. Yes. So let's write that in column form. So it would be one, four, four subtract zero, six. All right. So All this right. would so leave us end up with, with one. And we would end up with one and, and negative two. Okay. So if we look at that now, let us look. So if we fall on the Cartesian plane, one, so it would fall in this line here, that's yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. Negative two would be here. Right, that's for A. Right. All right. So let us see what happens. Ah, nice. look at that. Mm -hmm. Our A actually falls right here. Great. Great. And if you did it with any other point, it we would, would have tell gotten you it. that. So if you think about it. Six, we're moving from this is our object upward, six spaces Up. upward. All right. All right, great. great. All right, now we. So, A? A. So, we realize that in this now with our object, we don't have prime. Right, because so it is our original. Object. Great. Great. Good. And this one, pretty simple. The vertices of a triangle A, B are negative four, three, negative two, one, and negative three, five, respectively. Determine the vertices of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and the translation T equals five negative three. I think they can try this one at home. They can right try now. it while you know, you know, they can try it. So the vertices. So let's just go through it again with them. Yes. The vertices of the triangle A, B, C are 
negative 4. So what we're saying, A is negative it is 4, four three, 3. Right. B is negative 2, 1. Right. And C is negative 3, 5. Right. And they also, they also gave us the, the translation vector, which is 5, negative 3. Great. And they're asking us to find, determine the vertices of the image, which is A prime. Great. So all they need B to do prime. here, which we know, is the object plus the translation vector. So let's use A. So it's negative mm -hmm. 4, 3. Let, let, okay. Go right? ahead. No, man, let them work this out. We're, we, it's we're, just one we're doing for them, you're man. Doing one just for them? one point we're doing for them. One point we are doing for them. So it would give us one, zero. So All right. A prime so would have been one. They need to figure out what is B prime, C, C prime, prime, and we'll definitely look at it. We would have been looking at the vertices of a triangle ABC, and we have our vertices here, negative 4, 3, negative 2, 1, and negative 3, 5, respectively. And we are asked to determine the vertices of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime under the translation, and we have the translation vector. 5, negative 3. Now, before we took the break, we would have looked at A prime. Right. So we hope you would have tried or you would have attempted this at home. So just to check your answers, we are going to be looking at B prime now, just to check your answers, and as well as C prime. So let's look at B prime. So we would have had our object B, so the coordinate here of B, plus, remember, TV here stands for translation vector, and in working it out, we would have negative 2 plus 5, 1 plus negative 3, giving us 3 and so three negative, negative two, 3, negative 2. Yes, so that would have been our B prime. So let's, so that's B prime. We hope you got that one right. And let's check C prime now. So C mm. prime here, we know our coordinates for or the vertices here of the triangle. And C here would have been negative 3, we five, believe, yes, correct. negative 3, 5, and again, our translation vector is, is 5, five negative, negative 3. So let's go. So negative 3 so plus, plus 5. Right, and 5. 5 plus negative 3. Great. Oh, look at that. Which we now have to two be 2 and two. 2. Great. So I hope you got it. So we have so, A prime to be 1, 0. Right. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then we have B prime to be three. negative 3. Sorry, no, 3, three negative, negative 2. two. And, and we C have C prime, prime to be 2, two, two. 2. So you could, if you had the, the um, graph paper, you were asked to plot it. You are easy it, and fully yeah, capable of plotting, plotting these it. Three so points. you could be able to plot the object and you can plot the image. So you Perfect. know your vertices of the object of the triangle and mm -hmm. you would have already calculated the vertices of the image so you, you can definitely. plot it. So if you're not given a Cartesian plane and you need to use the coordinates to find either the image yes. or the object, right. you can manipulate this image. math statement that says the image is equal to the object plus the translation vector. vector. Yes. All right, here we go. Under the translation, T equals X, Y. The point P, 2, 1, is mapped onto P, P, pri prime. P prime, 5, 3. Find the translation vector. All right. So we want, we're giving them 30 seconds because it's just one point. It's one point. And it's the point that they're given is the... Object. Right. And they're also given the... Image. The image. So they are actually asked to find the translation vector. Right. Now in recapping, looking at the translation vector, we would have been... So we're still giving them the 30 seconds to try it, right. but we're giving them some little hints. What would we have shared about the translation vector? What does it tell us? It tells us the movement. It tells us the movement of the points on the object. Right? It tells us the slide that's taken place. If it's upward or downwards. Well, let's, let me start correctly. If it's left or right. Great. And then if it's up or down. Because but the left or right, hold on, stick a mm -hmm. pin. The left or right is, is parallel to which your axis? Your x-axis. Great. It's parallel to your x-axis. So Good. that's your horizontal movement. Good job. Right. And then your lower value tells us the up or down. Great. Which is parallel to your 
Y axis. Good, you're getting okay, it. Okay, great. And I hope they're getting it. So go oh, back to our math sentence or statement that stands because you proved that that yes. statement stands. We now have P, which is our object, and we have P prime, which is our image. And we want to find the translation. So we can use that statement. To find the translation vector, we can subtract the oh, object. object from the image all right good. so we can easily do that guys your object is two one subtract five three from it and we would have, you would have three two right. as our translation vector right. so remember this translation vector is a translation that would have taken place on the object point right. p so if you look at this now the object so p would have been two plus three to have Right. Yes. So two. Right. So three plus that would give us the, the five, five, and, and the two one plus, plus the one great. would give us the three. Great. Oh, look at that. So I now we want them away. to try a CSEC question. Most definitely. So the All right. CSEC question, <clears throat> pretty simple. The diagram below shows triangle RST and its image R prime S prime T prime after a transformation. Describe fully the transformation which maps. R S T onto R prime S prime T prime. Pretty simple because you would right. have been doing this from morning. It is indeed a translation. So because in describing your transformation fully, yes. you're going to let them know it's a translation. You look at the translation vector that is taking place mm -hmm. here. So you pick a point. Have, so we realize R, so the translation vector would have been two, two. units on the well parallel to the x-axis, and we would have one, two, three, four. four. So the translation vector here would have been two, two four, four. And they're right? both positive because it's right and down. Right. No, it's actually a negative. Good, because it's, it's a negative. Down. It's downwards. So it's, it's downwards. Two, it's negative. negative. Four. Right. Right. So you can use the vector, the translation vector in your explanation. Great. That the movement of the of the object is through the translation vector. Two, two negative, negative four, four and the integrity that there's no change, change in, in the, the orientation or the size so you know it stands true for a translation we think right. they should get it for today so we're just going to recap some yeah, properties of some translated some objects which we would have shared that. earlier so let's take a look so one after the translation an image will be the same shape and size as the object most definitely two the same orientation as the object and after translation, an image will be in a different position from the object. Line segments linking each vertex in the object to the corresponding vertex in the image is congruent and parallel. Yes. Pretty much saying the points are the same distance apart. Therefore, if you were to draw the line, they would be parallel if you're looking at those lines from each vertex. All right, guys. And that's all we have time for today.